Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have taken the chairman's permission to speak from here because I have a knee problem while my backbone is intact. <laughs> so, and I'm not an expert of the subject, unlike the, the panelists here. Um, I was asked by Outlook to write an article uh, for a special issue which they brought out two months ago. I studied the subject and uh, wrote an article and my notes today are just my article. I'm only speaking from there. Uh, there are two, three things which I would like to say that most of this debate on which every child uh, in the country seems to be an expert is, is based on ignorance. <laughs> they don't know, they don't know uniform theory report, but what for? And if you press them, the only answer they have is four wives. Muslims have four wives, but in other words, if we, if the law says that everyone will have four wives, then they will all be happy. <laughs> so, it is, uh, secondly, they just think it is polygamy. Beyond that, what is the, uh, the civil court personal law about? They have no idea. In fact, I have tested it myself and I would expect anybody from the media. So every now and then, you know, people, uh, media does this kind of story. I saw on Cyrus Barucha interviewing people in Bombay streets on uh, the 26th of January. Why is it important? 15, 20 people, not one had a correct answer. Who is the President of India? Who is the Prime Minister? Nehru. Well, Indra. You know, that kind of answers are coming from everybody. This is one of the such subjects. If you ask people, they won't be able to answer. Second important thing is that we are debating, the national debate is going on in a non-existing issue. What are we debating? Where is the uh, shape of the common civil code? The uniform civil code, what will it look like? What is its content? Nobody knows. Just the need of it. So there are uh, a few things. So why this demand is being raised and why? Polygamy is the key, and you refer to it, sir, also. And I have, uh, in my population myth, uh, I have uh, mentioned that polygamy actually is a myth. Uh, Islam, there is only one verse in the Quran which refers to polygamy. But, it, all it says, you can marry two, three or four. The moment I hear this, I uh, go uh, looking for my second, third and fourth wife. But the complete verse of the Quran is, provided you, you can marry, provided you can uh, treat them equally, which is a very difficult thing to do. This is the Quran. <laughs> the Quran itself is saying, which is a difficult thing to do. So, now, many ulama, many Malvis, they accept that polygamy is a permission. Not an injunction, a permission with a condition. But I'm very shocked to know when I studied the for my book that there is another condition which I have not heard any cleric talk about. This verse of the Quran is in the context of the orphans and the widows. Quran is saying, Allah is saying, you treat the orphans and widows equally, uh, uh, equitably, the, you be just to them, be fair to them, do not misappropriate their property, do not uh, replace their good thing with your bad things, and uh, ideally, you should marry uh, uh, two, three or four, from among them, from among them is the language. That means the first condition is marrying a widow. But if you pick up Hindustan time, then everyone wants a virgin. Nobody wants to marry a widow. And why widow? The emphasis was in the tribal days, there used to be so much of tribal warfare, the men used to get killed, there were so many women. And orphans and children, so basically it was a rehabilitation measure for them. But no Muslim cleric has talked about it. To me that is a basic condition because that is the context of the ayat. The from among them, marry two, three or four, but treat them equally. Now what does this mean, treat them equally? I bring her out of sympathy, I bring a woman as my second wife, send her to the kitchen to wash utensils. That's not the intention of this ayat of the Quran. The other one, the first wife is the queen and the, this one is a, is a maid. That is not what is intended, very clear from the Quran. And ever since I've written this book two years ago, no uh, Malvi Mullah uh, has contradicted me on this. 
so uh, which means they see some uh, logic in uh, what I have said. Just give me a moment. I'll this keeps disappearing, and I'll bring display uh, auto lock two minutes now. Auto lock never. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now, what did I find in the, when I was writing the book that polygamy in India? There was only one study so far in 1975, a committee on the status of women in India, and they found all communities to have polygamy. And the maximum polygamy was among the tribals, 15.24. Then the Buddhists, then the Jain, then the Hindus, 5.8, then least Muslim, 5.7. Now, this is something which people don't know. I'm a Muslim and I'm not polygamous. Although people might think I have uh, some uh, wives hidden in my house. <laughs> That's not true. The, then, um, uh, Factually, the, the, uh, this study said that polygamy is uh, uh, across all communities and Muslims are the least polygamous. But Muslims, because they think it is their right given by religion, are willing to die for this right which they don't even practice. <laughs> so I, I tell the Muslim that, look, if you don't practice polygamy, why don't you ask for its abolition? It is the others who will run for cover. It is the tribals who will say that look at their right is being taken, the Buddhist giants, everybody who is practicing it more. Now, some people have criticized, oh, you are talking of 1975 study. It's not my fault that that is the only study which has been done in the country. <laughs> and in any case, as a researcher, so I said, okay, whether it's a freak study, I went back three censuses, 1931, 41, 21, 31, 41 to see, and exactly the same trend was found, more or less the same figures, but declining in all across the, the thing, but the, that was the proportion. So, the myth of polygamy. But recently, the, you may have heard that the, some of us went to meet Mr. Bhagwat. I gave him this book. And uh, then I uh, told him some of the basic things, and one said, I said that polygamy in India is not possible. He said, how? I said, have you, you must have heard of the concept of uh, gender ratio. What is the gender ratio for, um, for 1,000 men? How many women are there? Do you know what is the gender ratio of the country? How many of you know that? You all know about uniform civil code debate? You don't know the gender ratio? 940, which is the highest in the last 120 years. It was uh, ninth, uh, uh, 20, 21, something, something. It, it has always been. Now, which means 60 people of 1,000 are forced to remain bachelors. Now, if 60 people will not find a, their first wife, how will I get my second? It's not possible. Of course, Mr. Bhagat had a hearty laugh, which means he registered my point. So, therefore, this is a debate about polygamy on which the, the half, most of the debate on the Uniform Civil Code is based, is totally baseless. And we need to go beyond it. Now, the concern uh, which uh, people talk about about the Muslim, poor Muslim women, you know, the triple talaq, Now, when we you hear uh, leaders of the same party, Mr. Deepak, uh, for, for you particularly, when they talk from the street, that YouTube is full of such videos. One uh, speech was in the presence of a very important leader. He had dig out the, the graves and a hundred uh, Muslim women and rape them, the dead bodies of the, the women. No, here you are every day lynching, making uh, the uh, women uh, widows, and you are talking about their right and you are crying. You know, these are all crocodile tears then. Do you really mean the welfare of uh, Muslim women? This needs to be considered. Triple talaq. Triple talaq was the most despicable thing, not allowed by Islam. In fact, before the Supreme Court came in, I tweeted, I am on Twitter, some of you may, may know, I tweeted to Muslim Personal Law Board, which was meeting somewhere in Jaipur or somewhere. I said, look, this is the most despicable thing. You please declare it is illegal and un-Islamic. And if you don't, Supreme Court will and then you will cry. 
they missed the opportunity. They did not declare it illegal. They said that this is uh, legal, although not desirable, which is not the same thing. Quran Sharif has only one verse in the Quran uh, uh, in, uh, about the divorce, and it says that ta talaq has to be three times over uh, scattered over three men menstrual cycles, because it expects reconciliation. If I divorce my wife today, but she will still con uh, live in my house according to the Quran, so that the next day I want my uh, uh, hangover is over uh, because most of the divorces take place at night when the, the guy has uh, boozed up. Uh, so next day if he cohibits, the talaq goes. Uh, nikah gets restored. So reconciliation, restoration is the purpose and you can do it second time and you can do it third time and the spirit is that don't make it a habit. Up to three times is fine but if you have done the third time, the talaq becomes absolute. This is the spirit of triple talaq. So, but un illiterate people, in one go, I give you three, three talaqs, I give you three talaqs, make it a... Uh, no, this is totally against the Quran, against Islam. This should have been banned by Muslims themselves, the National Law Board, they missed the opportunity. And uh, for we, and I've written about it, it's all on record, not saying it for effect. And what I am saying is it was published two months ago, so there, there is nothing new. Then the, uh, the bigamy, the, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the Supreme Court itself in one case mentioned clandestine bigamy among Hindus, clandestine, uh, we do it openly, others do it uh, clandestinely, uh, among the Hindus is worse than open polygamy among Muslims who are legally bound to treat them equally in maintenance and love. So this is the Supreme Court of India. Now, in the Velu Swami case 2010, the Supreme Court that denied maintenance to a second Hindu wife by holding her as mistress and keep. I want to make her my wife, you would like to keep her as a mistress. Now, which is better? Supreme Court. Then, uh, uh, secondly, you know, as I said, that it is only polygamy, divorce, triple marriage, uh, they think it's uh, uniform civil court is all about that. There are so many issues. Maintenance, divorce, adoption, inheritance, guardianship, as uh, Jessa mentioned. Nobody actually knows that the, uh, these are uh, all part of it. Secondly, personal law. I do nikah, you do pheras. How does it affect the, either of us? I'll get buried, you'll get cremated. These are the for personal laws. How does it affect anybody? How is it uh, dividing the country? It's ridiculous. So, uh, uh, there are some of the things which were mentioned by Justice Kannan. Many people, uh, I mean, I did not know half of them. They're happening somewhere or the other. If an uh, uncle's uh, niece marriage is taking place, how is it dividing the country? How is it defecting anyone in this hall? Uh, it might be the obnoxious practice, but so be it. So, now, nation unity is the other issue mentioned. I would like to remind you, you know, everybody says that it is a directive principle of state policy. Article 44. How many people have read that, uh, that article? Maybe I'll read it out to you, the exact word, because they are important. It's only one sentence. Uh, it says the state shall endeavor, endeavor means try, endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil court throughout the territory of India. It doesn't say across all communities, it says the territories of India. Now this is a very important thing. Already people have started looking for a backdoor exit. Because when they found that Article 371, Sixth Schedule of the Constitution provides the, the same similar protection to several northeastern states, to Goa. And I did not know till I read this, that in the Nagaland even CRPC is not enforceable. CRPC, imagine the criminal procedure code, is not a personal law, but has it divided the country? 
if it is happening in uh, Nagaland for specific reasons, actually maybe if it was not there, Nagaland uh, would have perhaps seceded. But actually the, these, uh, this flexibility was provided to keep the country united. Now, most of these arguments, yes, most of these arguments, by the way, are from the uh, the Commission Law Commission, 21st Law Commission, which was headed by Justice B. S. Chauhan. When he was appointed, he was the senior most judge after the Chief Justice. And he picked up by this government, a blue-eyed boy of this government, and what did he write? That uniform civil code is neither necessary nor desirable. Who is saying this? Justice B. S. Chauhan, the law commission appointed by this government. Neither necessary nor desirable. Then, will it uh, unite the country? He says, forget about uniting, it will disunite the country. Justice Chauhan. Uh, um, then, existence of differences does not imply discrimination, but is indicative of a robust democracy. Uh, there is a, uh, and then he said there is need to deal with laws that discriminate between men and women. And that is my understanding. Uh, I have also taken that Islam, every religion should reform itself. The reform of a religion has to come from within the community. If it comes from outside, it will always be misunderstood. It will always be resisted. I uh, spoke against triple talaq. I am a Muslim and I criticize uh, a Muslim personal law board. Similarly, every community you should try to reform. Sir, I'm just winding up. Uh, now, the fact that the northeastern states are already, you know, exit clause, as I mentioned, you no, know, no, what we'll do is we will exempt the northeast. Another place I read, go, we'll exempt the six. So, where is the uniformity? What are you talking about? What is the intention? Just uh, politics? Uh, that's something to be worried about. Then, uh, Another thing the law commission said, cultural diversity cannot be compromised to the extent that our urge for uniformity itself becomes the reason for threat to the inter territorial integrity of the nation. So I would say, sir, that forget about everything else. The law commission which examined 75,378 representations over two years, the largest ever deliberation, met various delegations. Please read that commission report. Don't sweep it under the carpet. Please follow them. This is uh, not a Congress creation. This uh, commission report came only three years ago, four years ago. Just please follow that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much.